For this module, it'll be important to download the Jump Journal because we'll be looking at a number of different simulations and demonstrations of sampling distributions. First, let's open the Seeing Sampling Variability section, and what I'm going to do is click on the first link to Random Squares. Random Squares is actually a website that I put together that uses PHP to simulate a couple different sampling scenarios. I like to start with this demonstration because what we're going to do is simulate first coin flips and then move in to more complicated matters. Now in this demonstration, what we have is a little block in the center that has what we'll call an expected value of 0.5. You can think of this like a coin. A coin can take on two values, 0 and 1. The expected value of a coin, however, is not a heads or a tails, but rather somewhere in between. In fact, right in between. Expectation, or expected values, is really a long-run probability. If we were to take a million flips of a coin, we would expect 500,000 of them to be heads and 500,000 of them to be tails. Of course, if we flipped a million coins, we may not get exactly 500,000, but mathematical expectation is very specific here. We expect 0.5 of all the flips to be heads. So, this little block here is one coin. And if I click the button at the bottom, this page will return a new value for this coin. Notice, every time I click it, we get another random draw. Now let me orient you to the bottom. We have a measure of the total. In this case, we only have one coin, so it's simply adding up the value of 0 or 1 on each flip. We also have a measure of the mean. This will be more important later as we start looking at the mean of several independent random events. Finally, we have a listing of the expected value. On this page, we could actually change the expected value of this coin, for instance, if the coin was biased. All right, so now that we know what this simulation is doing, that is, every time I click the button, a new flip of the coin, let's consider what type of sampling error we get every time we flip this one coin. Remember, sampling error is a measure of how far were we from the population value. In this case, we're talking about the population value of a random process, that is, the expected value of all coin flips that could ever happen. Well, the expected value here, if we're treating heads and tails as zeros and ones, the expected value is 0.5. So every flip of this coin that I do, I'm getting some sampling error. Notice there's no possible way I could flip a coin and get a value of 0.5. I can only get a heads or a tails. So every sample will have sampling error. Now, if I were to click this 100,000 times, what types of outcomes would we get? I certainly don't want to click this button 100,000 times, so let's instead have Jump simulate this one block for us. To do this, go ahead and click the binomial link under Seeing Sampling Variability. This will bring up an empty data set that has three columns. The mean if we take a sample of size one, that is, if we have one coin or one block in this grid, the mean if we take samples of size 4, we'll see this in a second with 4 blocks, or the mean if we have samples of size 100, that is, 100 little blocks that are each taking on random values. Let's see how we're going to make jump do this. I'm going to right-click the mean, n equals 1 column, and go to the formula. In the formula, you'll see that we have a function here. It's called a random binomial that's taking two arguments, 1 and 0.5. Then, I'm dividing that whole numerator by 1. Let me recreate this formula and step you through what I'm doing. In the functions group, you'll see a section called random. Random will return random numbers from particular distributions. Notice we have random uniform, a flat distribution, random normal, random f, which we'll talk about later, random couchy, a particularly frustrating distribution, I think made up by mathematicians to frustrate statisticians, but finally, random binomial, which is the one we care about. A binomial process is one that can take on discrete values. The first argument in here is how many flips, in essence, we're asking for. If I put in 1, this random binomial function will return a 0 or a 1. p here is the probability this random process comes up with a 1. In this case, this is linking to the expected value. I'll put in 0.5. Let me move this to the side, and let's make sure we understand the relationship here. This little box that I have in my simulator is represented by this random binomial function. That is, in jump, random binomial will flip a coin one time, and the coin has a probability of 0.5 of coming up heads, just like our real coin or our fake coin that we have sitting in my little simulator. 
Now, before I had this divided by one, now the reason why I did this was because for consistency, when we start taking more random processes in the numerator, we'll always be dividing by how many different random processes we have. We want to talk about the distribution of means. And in this case, we have one random process divided by one to give us the mean value that each sample takes on. Notice that dividing by one here actually does nothing. Again, this is just for consistency's sake. All right, so that's our mean of n equals one column, but how are we gonna get the values? For clarity, before we generate any random draws, I'm gonna take the other two columns in the data set, I'm gonna right click, and I'm actually gonna to go to hide. This will actually hide them from the table so we can focus our attention on the n equals one draws. All right, so let's add some values. I want you to notice what happens when I add one row. If I double click in the blank space, Jump will actually compute this random function for the first flip. That's like me pressing this button one time. If I click another row, Jump will do this again. That's like me pressing this button a second time. Now, if I wanted to, I can keep adding rows one at a time all the way up to, I think I said I was gonna do 100,000 of these. Well, that's gonna take too long. Let's actually not do it this way. Let me delete these rows and I'll show you a quicker way to add as many rows as we need. In this case, I'll go to the rows menu and go to the add rows function. Here, I'll put in 100,000. So again, I'm gonna be asking jump to, in essence, click this button for me using its own function 100,000 times. Let me click okay. Just to prove it to yourself, you can scroll down to the table and see we really do have 100,000 rows here, each a binomial process, with a sample size of one, that is one block. Now, let's look at what we observed over these 100,000 samples. To look at the distribution of this mean n equals one column, I'll go to the analyze menu, select distribution, and I'll take the mean n equals one column and put it into the y role. Now, before we look at any of the statistics, let's actually just look at the histogram of what we observed. Over all of these flips, that is over all of the 100,000 samples we took, of sample size one, we got a lot of heads and a lot of tails. In fact, almost exactly the same number of heads and tails. This might be something we expect. Over that many flips, we expect to get pretty much exactly the same numbers of heads and tails. But remember, each sample that we took, each sample of size one has sampling error. Remember that each sample is in essence trying to approximate the expected value of 0.5. No sample was able to do this though, because any of the samples in which I got a one, well that has sampling error of positive 0.5, and any of the samples in which I came up with the tails, so zero, I had negative 0.5 sampling error. So we have sampling error here, but none of our individual samples ever got it spot on. Now overall, let's look at the summary statistics. Over all the samples, these averaged out to be pretty darn close to our expected value. 0.49913. It looks as though we got a few fewer heads than we expected, but we always expect some sampling error. So even though we had 100,000 samples, we don't expect to get exactly 50,000 heads and 50,000 tails.